<laughs> Greetings, champion parents. Welcome back to Mommy Talk. Come on in and share. Please take a moment to share with your family and friends on your social media platforms. We also invite you to engage with us this evening and chime in on the chat. Feel free to leave a question and comment and a shout out. As always, we are here to inspire positive parental engagement. We are real, relatable, and right on time with Dr. Pert, Miss Lisa, Miss April, and we have a special guest, Karen Robinson. Miss Robinson is a graduate of Michigan State University and North Park Seminary in Chicago. She is a Imagineer. She is an Imagineer. No, I have that. I'm sorry. My son has his uh iPad on. Turn that off, please. Thank you. She we is an Imagineer. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> she is an imagineer and purpose strategist helping women of faith be who they are called to be contact her at www.behoyouarecalledtobe.com again that's www.behoyouarecalledtobe.com so parents, who hasn't been hurt by the actions or words of another? Perhaps a parent constantly criticized you growing up, a colleague sabotaged a project, or your partner had an affair. Or maybe you've had a traumatic experience such as physically uh, being abused by someone or emotionally abused by someone. These wounds can leave you with lasting feelings of anger and bitterness, even vengeance. But if you don't practice forgiveness, you might be, one, might be the one who pays most dearly. By embracing forgiveness, you can also embrace peace, hope, gratitude, and joy. Consider how forgiveness can lead you down the path of physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. So welcome. And thank you for that awesome introduction, Dr. Perd. I was so excited I dropped my phone. Did y'all see me drop my phone? <laughs> I was excited too, but wait, I'm listening. I'm like, hold on. I just told my son I was about to tape and I'm hearing all this bat noise in the background. I tried to do a little finger cue, like, come on now, turn that down. Right, get it together. And I'm all dropping my phone because I was trying to make sure I share, share, share. <laughs> Drive you know home. what? That's fine. That's okay. We're real relatable and right on time. And sometimes we have to take a break. Like, Dion, please close your bedroom door. Look, and mom, please stop making that noise. <laughs> <laughs> <He closed it. laughs> right. Look. All right. Yeah. So welcome, Miss Robinson, Karen Robinson. We appreciate you for being here with us. This Thank week. you so much. Thank you for inviting um, me discussing the importance of forgiveness. Um, like I said, I attended a workshop with you a few weeks ago, maybe a week or two ago, it wasn't too long ago about forgiveness and it really resonated with me. And I just thought that it was good for you to come on and share uh, forgiveness as it relates to being a mom, being an individual and, uh, and you know, just overall, just the importance of forgiveness. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm excited for this opportunity. Uh, to share with you all. I'm excited to be here. And again, thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to talk about this topic. Yeah. Okay. So um, what is the, your definition of forgiveness? Well, when I think about forgiveness, first of all, let me uh, set an intention. My intention for tonight is that we, um, I'm a person of faith. So my intention for tonight is that we receive God's grace there, that people leave this, um, 30 minutes or an hour, however long we're together, that we leave this time together feeling that we've received God's grace. No judgment and you don't leave here um, feeling shame because that's not my intent at all. That's not uh, what this is about. That's and when awesome. I think about the topic of forgiveness, a lot of times we've been taught that forgiveness is sort of like a one-way street. Mm -hmm. I've looked up several definitions of forgiveness and most of them are about the person who's been transgressed. I don't like to use the word victim, but a lot of times when I looked at 
uh, definitions of forgiveness. It always talked about what the, the person who's been transgressed, mm -hmm. what they need to give to the person who's transgressed them or the transgressor. Mm -hmm. And I don't agree with that. That I don't. That's not what we find uh, in scripture. A lot of times we are obligated to forgive and you don't find many times that there's any discussion of what the transgressor is obligated to do. Always what we need to do, we need to let it go, we need to forgive, we need to move on. So the conversation tonight hopefully will be um, freeing for most of us. Uh, hopefully it will be a gracious conversation. So the definition that I have for forgiveness, it's a two-part thing. So I'm going to read it. Forgiveness is a conscious and deliberate decision on the part of the transgressed to release feelings of resentment and vengeance toward the transgressor after the transgressor has done these four things that I have listed. So I don't believe in just, uh, and people say, well, you gotta forgive so you can move on. I think you can resolve that certain things happened. You can accept that, hey, this happened to me. I don't, I don't personally believe that without the transgressor doing these four things that we offer forgiveness. So that's a little bit different than what we've been taught. Uh, for those of us who are from faith backgrounds, we're often not taught that, mm -hmm. but that's where we are. You want me to go through them? Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, look, cause I'm like, what are they? <laughs> Well, the first thing is the transgressor, the person who's caused harm, first, they need to acknowledge their wrongdoing. Before we can talk about forgiveness, the person who's transgressed needs to say, hey, I did something wrong. The second step is that they need to re express remorse for what they did wrong. They need to express sorrow that that was not, um, whether they intended to do what they did or not, um, they need to express sorrow um, the person needs to i have repents they need to repent it should just be re offer repentance or whatever <laughs> they need to repent they need to say i'm sorry mm -hmm. for what i did i'm sorry how i hurt you and the fourth step is they need to offer some sort of restitution and when we think about forgiveness when it uh, when we talk about money these things are very clear if i went into any of you ladies bank account it's Christmas time, even if I say I need the money, but if I got into you guys' bank accounts and said, you know, it's Christmas time, I've been, it's not my case, but I'm out of work, blah, 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 I need some money. If I went into your bank account, you'd be very clear that before you forgave me, that I would at the very least need to say I'm sorry and give you your money back. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times in interpersonal relationships, the person that's been transgressed or the victim is obligated to extend forgiveness and the person who's done the harm does absolutely nothing. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. We could not talk about forgiveness if I stole money from each of you ladies. Mm -hmm. Until I acknowledge that I stole it, that you didn't give me permission to go into your account. I would need to say, I'm sorry. And I, at the very least, need to give you your money back and make you whole. Right. Yeah, I think that restitution is some type of um, restitution as far as how you can make your wrongs right. I think that is a good step as far as with forgiveness. Yeah. yeah, I think that's really important. Right. And even with parents, people might say, well, how can I um, make whole something that didn't involve money? Well, if you did some things when you were a parent and you weren't in your healthy place that you're in now, Offering restitution may mean offering to pay for some therapy for your child. Even if what you did when you were not well emotionally, but that's an example of not, you don't just say, oh, sorry, sorry, I did the best I could. Well, that's nice, but you caused harm. And that's like I said, it's not to cause, I'm not trying to shame any parent. That's not what I'm saying. We've all done things that whether intentionally or not out of our broken places, we've harmed people. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a superstar in terms of being a, a, a person who forgives and uh, offers forgiveness and receives forgiveness, restitution, I think, is healthy to be a part of that mix. Yes. It's definitely a start. If you took my money, give it back some kind of way. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> even if I spent it, even if I took $1,000 and I said, well, I'm going to give you $10, $10 a week. Yes. Yeah. A for effort. Yeah. Yes. I guess that'd be a hundred weeks. No. 
it'll be a lot. It'll be a long time, but I, it, you know. Right. There's some type of restitution, some type of paying me back of where you've harmed me. I, I, right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what is the relationship between love and forgiveness? Well, in my understanding is, like I said, I'm a person of faith. I'm a, I'm a, I consider myself a Christian. And I know in this context, that word can be triggering, but I am a person, I'm a Jesus follower. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. And because of that, one of the things, one of the last things Jesus said before he left uh, his physical place here on earth was he told us to um, love one another and love each other. Um, what's the scripture? I should have it written down. Love love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm-hmm. So that implies that we have a love for ourselves. And I believe that if we believe we are made in the image of God, if we believe that if we're divine beings, even if you're not of the Christian faith, that we believe we are divine beings, then we also believe that you ought not treat me. I'm not going to allow you to treat me in certain ways. I'm not going to allow you to treat me in non-honoring ways and, that's, and make that okay. When I think of love, it's saying I love myself. I have a hard, high regard for myself. Mm-hmm. And I don't just accept any kind of a treatment and say, well, I'm going to forgive them. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, boundaries are important. And yeah. you, know, you have to have boundaries because you love yourself and you expect to be treated a certain way. So you have to have standards and boundaries. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's important to have in place. So why do you feel forgiveness of self is important? Why should I forgive myself? I think so that you're not operating. I, I think if, when you don't forgive yourself, you can tend to operate from a place of shame. Mm-hmm. And when we and when mm-hmm. we're in a shame spiral, we can tend to harm other people intentionally or unintentionally, and we harm ourselves. So I think when we um, don't love ourselves and don't forgive ourselves, it can cause us to behave in ways that aren't healthy. Mm-hmm. And we see, think, the, think of the scripture, we're here to have abundant life. Well, that, that means emotionally, not just financially. But we're here to have an abundant and joyful life emotionally as well. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I feel like, you know, um, sometimes we hold ourselves to a certain higher standard. Mm-hmm. And what I just like to say, and I say it to, you know, whomever, that we are in a place where we need help. Yeah. So we all need help. We all evolving. We all, you know, just trying to do better. So um, with forgiving ourselves, we got to be more compassionate and understanding of ourselves yeah. and, you know, not holding ourselves, you know, um, to a, a, a higher, I mean, of course, we want to hold ourselves to a higher standard, but we need to understand that we all need, we are growing and we all, you know, uh, do things that we're not supposed to do. We do things that's wrong. So it's important to make sure we forgive ourselves. And it'll, it's a never ending journey. Um, we'll never, I mean, in my opinion, um, I think we'll never get to a destination. You know, life is a never ending journey. We're always um, going to, I don't care how rich we are, how established you are, you are always going to be striving, you know, mm-hmm. for the next, you know, I accomplished this, now it's time to move on. You know, it's always going to be a next thing. Yeah. And it's always twists and turns. Are you, are you all familiar with a lab, what a labyrinth is or, um, if you ever yeah. go, at yeah. Hall- okay, and they have those mazes at Halloween time, but if you see people on their labyrinthian journey, it mm-hmm. might look like they're going away from God and turning back yeah. toward God, but it's all a part of their journey, and we're all in the labyrinth. You know, I might be going left, April might be turning right, but we're all in the mix, and all yeah. our intention is to do the best that we can and extend grace to ourselves and to our children. And to other other people, Mm -hmm. for sure. So, Ms. Karen, I have a question, um, and I do want to say thank you for our listeners for tuning in. And I had the same question as one of our listeners who wrote in, uh, Frank McGee. Hello, hi, how are you? So what are your thoughts on those who still believe that they should forgive regardless if the person has asked for forgiveness or not? Because I personally know... um, someone who is struck who has struggled with forgiveness and so my question too is what if the person who caused the harm never says they're sorry yeah that's a great question and i thought about that question and that in my reading um that is even though as christians we're taught to always forgive like i said that's that's my framework i personally in my understanding of scripture we're we're 
asked to forgive or God extends forgiveness uh, toward us once we acknowledge our sins, when we are stiff-necked and when we are um, unrepentant, I think we can give ourselves grace that someone has harmed us and accept that we've been harmed. But in terms of saying, when I say I've forgiven you, that's like saying it's okay. I, um, I, I embrace what you've done and I don't, my understanding is that's not um, what we're called to do. That's, we're holding ourselves to a higher standard than um, the scripture holds um, Christ to. Because even when Christ was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus didn't say, I forgive them. He was appealing to God that even when they do come to themselves, that let's give them forgiveness once they come to themselves. But when a person has transgressed us, and when I think of um, serious offenses, whether that be abuse, um, a betrayal in a marriage or um, domestic violence, like egregious sorts of things. I, in my understanding of scripture, in my look at it, I don't know that we offer forgiveness to a person who's unrepentant and who is continuing in that sort of behavior. Mm -hmm. That's not where I'm at with it. Because I think when we do that, we, we obligate victims um, and we hold them to a higher standard than we hold transgressors. And I, does that make does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Um, one of the things that I practice in life is um, because you can learn from people. You can learn what to do and not to do. Mm -hmm. And so I have seen how when you don't forgive somebody or don't for forgive a situation um, that it can negatively impact you and have um and you negative and you operate in such a negative space. And so I've watched an individual who has struggled with forgiveness. And I told myself, I don't want to be like that. Mm -hmm. I, I told myself, I'm not going to operate in a space where I'm going to allow someone to have control over me. So what I can do is I think that it's great that you said, accept what happened. Uh, you can accept what happened. And I think it's, you have to, I remember somebody had hurt me as well too. And the best advice somebody gave to me is that you learn to live with it. You learn to live with it. And for me, it's best to just move on from the situation, whether you forgave that person or not. I think you have to tell yourself, okay, it happened. So now what? Am I going to allow myself to continue to operate in this negative space or am I going to move on and be called into my purpose? I think everything teaches us a lesson and some things that happen in life, it, it, it can be hurtful, you know, and you can have those different triggers that spark different memories and things like that. But I think it's best to tell yourself like, hey, look, it happened. It's, it's, I have to move on from the situation, whether somebody said, you know, sorry or not. And that's the, that's where I'm situated in at, in my life where, hey, regardless if somebody says sorry or not, it is what it is. And I think that sometimes you have to get to the point where you have to take, it's not about you anymore. You know what I'm saying? Um, it becomes like, sometimes you never know what a person is going through and it becomes about them. Like, what are they going through? What, what's their struggles? How come they didn't apologize? But sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes they're going, we can't take onus of their issues. Of their, and, and You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to just figure out, you know what, it's not me. You know, um, they're going through something and I don't know what it is. And like you said, I agree with you. You know, sometimes you have to just let it go. You have, you learn to live with it. You learn to um, forgive, but you do have, I, you know, cause I was in a situation where I had to realize, you know what, this not, this wasn't about me, you know, and I just had to move on. You have to move on, you know, but you still, some, I know sometimes in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, you still didn't say sorry. Right. I, in, in my understanding and in my um work with women, I find that obligating people to forgive further, vic it can, let me, it can further victimize women mm -hmm. in particular. That's, that, those are who I work with primarily. I don't um, coach men. I, I have, but my market is, is women. Mm -hmm. I think it, it can tend to further victimize women. And I think you can um, accept that something happened and not be bitter work, do your work, work out your own salvation and, and get healing over something, that doesn't necessarily mean um, 
that you forgive that person that you're back in relationship with them. Because my thing, it's almost like saying that that's okay. And I think that's not the message. That's certainly not the message I want to give here tonight. But that's different than what people have taught. We've been taught to just forgive, let it go. This is for you. You're drinking poison. No. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the reason yeah, I, I, I think that's, um, I, to me, I, I've, I don't think that's realistic to say, let something go. Because there's always something that triggers that memory or that experience that possibly can happen. But I think there are different coping strategies that people can uh, adopt that can help them navigate, you know, whenever they experience like a memory of mm -hmm. something that happened. Um, and I think that it's up to that individual to say, hey, you know, this happened, you know, it how how am I going to proceed in life? But then another thing that I want to also say is we don't even know how the other person who may have offended us actually feels later on down the line because some yeah. people don't know how to say sorry sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think it's important to just say, hey, you know, I'm not going to look for somebody to say sorry. I'm going to look for how I can operate in a space that allows me to walk in my purpose. Exactly. Exactly. And not be burdened by that and, and, and seek your own healing over it and, you, and seek your mm -hmm. own resolve. And one of the, um, this came up and um, when that shooting occurred at the church in Charleston, I don't know if you all remember a few years, I think four years ago. Mm -hmm. When the young man Dylan Roof shot the shot the people in the church, and I remember one of the women, um, her dad was one of the people that was killed, and I remember before the bodies were even taken out of the church, she stood there and said, "I forgive Dylan Roof," and I was thinking, "Ooh," because again, I when we believe we're made in God's image, that is not okay. I think to say to tolerate or to say that that's okay, I forgive him. He at that point, and to this day, that young man. There's an article in the Washington Post. I looked that up before we came on the air tonight. He's he's very clear. Make no mistake. I do not regret my just my actions on that day. He still says that. Mm -hmm. So I think about that when we think we're made in God's image. That is not okay. Can we resolve and can she get healing? But to say I forgive something that a person has not repented from, he's not expressed remorse. He's not acknowledged that he's caused harm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that God is calling us to that. That's just, this is Karen Robinson. This is different though, however, than what we've been taught in most churches. Every um, definition that I looked up tonight always talked about what the victim needs to do, what the victim needs to do. It never talked about um, transgressor needs to do. You know what? I think there are some parts, and, I, and I'm not going to try to get biblical, but I really think that there are some parts in the Bible that is still under the slave master's um, interpretation for us, um, mm -hmm. because I think everything does not apply to, you know, some of the things it's just like, it's hard to explain. And, it, and, it, and I feel like everything does not apply to, you know, a reality. You know, and, and I do think that there are some things that are still up under their interpretation of how we, you know, should look at things. Right. And, and so be clear, I'm not saying that you are hard hearted. I'm not saying that um, you reject right. forgiveness, but I'm saying that there is a process. There's a process. And I don't think, the, so be clear, I'm saying the process does not obligate the transgressed. There is a two part relationship in my understanding of forgiveness. You acknowledge what you did. You, go, you, you make restitution, you, re, you repent, you stop doing the behavior. <laughs> Hello, we stop doing that crazy stuff. You're cheating. I can't forgive my spouse for adultery, but yet he's every Friday night after he gets his check, he's out at the bar cheating on me. Can I forgive that? No, I'm not called to that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There's a two part, um, in my understanding of what forgiveness needs to look like. So I'm open, my heart is open when you stop, <laughs> you say you're sorry, you, you change your ways, then we can talk about restoring our relationship, but it does not obligate me to just extend forgiveness and there's been no change in behavior. I think I can forgive a person, um, but I can also move forward, you know, and I think it's just a matter of how we are, uh, you know, look at um, how we look at like our own 
um, personal situations. Like I could, uh, yeah, brother, I could forgive you, but I'm gonna move on, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and cause that's the highest when you re reconcile. Um, yeah. I yeah. wonder what's that Miss April's um, head over there. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just listening. I think you all have very good points. You got me. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forgiveness is important to me. I can forgive. And um, I'm learning to forgive myself, most importantly. I think that's something I skipped over. I can forgive somebody and move on, but I just need to make sure that I understand um, and forgive myself. Mm -hmm. I think that's what uh, resonates with me, making sure that, you know, I could just continually forgive myself. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Extend grace to yourself. Yeah. 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 So when should we teach our children about forgiveness? You said when should we teach yeah. our children? Mm -hmm. I think when they are preteens, when they can kind of understand um, when they've caused harm and that sort of thing. When they're little, you want to teach your children not to lie and to be honest and things like that. But when they, I think when they're nine or 10, they can kind of better understand Mm -hmm. concept of um doing wrong and consequences for their wrong and maybe making restitution when they're little i don't think they would understand that right but i think when they're pre -teen. well we can kind of teach them like if somebody if, you know how children fight over their toy and somebody take their toy do you give them their toy back that's kind of a restitution like okay you can have your toy back i guess right. on a small scale or you yeah. hit a kid with the toy you say you're sorry yeah <laughs> yeah right. But in a bigger scheme, when they, when they, and I mean, when I think of uh, forgiveness and more um, larger issues that they might um, do in the family or tell stories or lives that are, have big consequences, mm -hmm. things like that, when they have a better understanding. I think when they're preteens, 10, 10, 11, 12 in there. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. right now for my younger children, what I try to do is I try to teach them uh, to have others respect their boundaries. Mm. You, you know, that's one of the things that I'm real big on with my children. Yeah, that's, that's important. Mm -hmm. And teaching boundaries, that's so, I mean, uh, kudos to you to, for teaching that. And that's such time. a young age and that's good. Yeah. Because they already have that foundation yep. as they grow older. Mm -hmm. These are my borders, and that that ties that totally ties into forgiveness. When you trespass, transgress, or trespass my borders, that's not okay. And what right. do we do about that? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So should we forgive and then forget? Is forget? Should we always forget? Or no? Yeah. I think when I when I think of big issues of betrayal, like let's go back to money. If let's say April, I was your CPA and I did your, I've been doing your taxes for years. <laughs> and one year for whatever reason, I, I screwed up your taxes, whether I intended to or not. I don't know that you were forget forget that. We can reconcile, I can make, I can apologize, I can make you whole, give you back whatever money you lost, but you're not gonna forget that necessarily and let me do your taxes next year right? right probably right. not we can you can forgive me we can still be friends but you may not say i want karen to do your taxes <laughs> right yes. so you can forget forgiving doesn't have to mean that you forget or that the relationship even 100 percent goes back to where it was right. you know i think about children and, and harm done to children things you know about someone it's not wise to just say well you know they did that few a few years ago I'm gonna let so-and-so babysit my child mm -mm. No. I'm not gonna go down that road but you know what I mean <laughs> we have to still uh, we can extend grace and forgiveness but you don't forget right mm -hmm. that's important that's important I agree because I don't even think that it's uh possible to forget mm -hmm. because yeah. there's always something that can trigger that experience that had happened before. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I think one of the signs if a person has um, transgressed your borders or trespassed your borders and caused harm, if they're truly sorry about it, they won't push and insist. I can't insist, April, that you let me do your taxes. Girl, I thought we were cool. You're not gonna let me do your taxes. You're not. No, if I'm truly sorry that, about the harm that I caused, I'm gonna respect your boundaries and respect yeah. that you have another choice that's best for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to argue um, or feel entitled 
to a relationship that I had with you prior to me harming you. That's another part. That's, and that's a symbol of a person being sorry for their behavior. They're not feeling entitled or making you feel guilty or all that other stuff. They respect your boundaries and say, hey, I messed up. Cool. We can be friends. There's no hard feelings. But that doesn't mean we go back to how things were. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I think that whenever you offend somebody or you cross their boundaries, just because you say sorry doesn't mean that that person has to accept has that. To forgive you, yeah. yeah. I think it. that's something that people should keep in mind. Like, okay, just because you said sorry doesn't mean don't expect a certain reaction. Or don't mm -hmm. obligate the person to another reaction. Yep, I agree with yeah. that 100%. Yeah. And we have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say that's a sign of a person being sorry and that, mm -hmm. that entitlement or feeling that uh, uh, trying to obligate the, uh, the victim. That's a yeah. sign that's like, mm -mm, you're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have a question from our audience, one of our audience members, Harriet Bryant. She wants to know what do you think about forgiveness and never being bothered with that person again and fear that they would do it again or something worse? In some cases, that could be wise. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, children come up to me. Obviously, this is mommy talk. Duh. When you have children, if someone has harmed your children, um, you're not obligated to allow that person access to your child. That's not even wise. If, you're, if a coach or teacher, relative, or whomever harmed your child, that's not... The obligation is not on you to continue to allow someone access to your child or to you. It doesn't right. mean you haven't forgiven. It doesn't mean you're hard hearted or bitter or all these things that people might try to say about you. Mm -hmm. Wisdom would say if someone's harmed your child, I'm going to put up my head like stop in the name. <laughs> you don't have access to my child anymore that, in that way. And that's that's the calling. I think God was I think that's wise and I think that's necessary. Very good, very good. So we have another question from Frank McGee. He says, power and control dynamics can be challenging for some. How should we recognize the early signs? Of power and control dynamics? Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. I think you really kind of answered that when you basically said, mm -hmm. you know, expecting a certain response for somebody. I think you kind of yeah. asked, yeah. Okay. If you go, if you guilt mm -hmm. tripping too, anything uh, uh, guilt uh, shaming uh, a person, or like how you uh, said like she's bitter, or yeah, yeah, or into um, you know you like I like you have to forgive me because I'm asking you, you know, or you have to forgive me because I brought you uh, water and flowers or whatever, you oh, know. Yeah. I think mean, all those are uh, they're, uh, signs of manipulation, and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and we have to be uh, mindful of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you love me, say it. <laughs> <with me. laughs> <laughs> was that what you were saying? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but that works. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So we appreciate you for having this conversation with us, um, Ms. Robinson. Can you share your following to how the audience can get in contact with you for more information? Yeah, so they can go to my website. It is uh, be who you are called to be dot com. So www dot be who you are called to be dot com, or you can reach me at um, coach Karen Robinson at gmail dot com. To be dot com. I like that. Yeah. I feel like doing like be email again. I'm sorry. Who you are called to be dot com. Yeah, be, be who you are called. Yes, be. I really believe we should as women. We are to be who we're called to be. Um, yes. I think we live lit up lives because life is tough enough anyway. But when we're doing what we've been called to do by God or your higher power of spirit, your life is a joy. You know, not to say you don't have hard days, but it's a different life. Yes. So, yeah, April, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of people out there. I know somebody is out there and you're listening and you're looking for words of encouragement and you're looking for that spirit where here is the spirit. Be who you are called to be. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I like that. That's really nice. Thank yeah. you. And there's, if you go to, if the audience goes to my website, there is an exercise on, on purpose that they can access. Uh, you have to put their email in. If they don't want to give me their email on that site, they can go to coachkarenrobinson at gmail.com 
And then there's an exercise that I have for women to help uh, clarify their purpose. And then we talk about I like, this. I like this picture. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Okay, I'm, I'm just make sure I put it in the um, chat. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I do want to um, say one thing to our listeners out there. As a parent, it is okay to say to your children, I'm sorry if I did X, Y, and Z to you. Because as times, you know, as parents, we don't know the answers. And sometimes we're reactive to a certain situation and we may have caused harm or yeah. caused uh, our children to feel a certain type of way. But I think it's always good to go back and revisit something when you know deep down in your heart that you didn't respond correctly so parents it's okay to tell your children hey i'm sorry for how i responded in this certain situation yeah that's important to revisit it because sometimes we react because we're busy or we're we're frustrated not necessarily our kids is frustrating us we're frustrated we may respond so it's good to go back and revisit and you know this is a teachable moment to let your kids know that was incorrect for me to respond that way i really apologize you know yeah, that is important, Dr. Perk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one question I have, and I'll leave you guys with this. A therapist told me years ago, I believe everybody should have a good therapist, a good accountant, <laughs> a good attorney. But she said to me, Karen, you should ask your kids, what is it like to be a child in my home? Mm-hmm. Now, if your kids are really little, they may not be able to articulate, but that's a question we can all ask. What is it like for a child, for children in my home? What is it like for them? And then as they're, they're older, you can, that's a conversation. If you can ask that question and hold on to yourself <laughs> and receive their answer, what is it like to be, for me to be your mom? What is it like for me to be your dad? That can provide a whole lot of healing. So mm-hmm. yes, a whole <laughs> lot of conversation too. A whole lot of conversation. Yeah. I wonder if I text that to Seth and Kayla, what they're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, so I'm absolutely. so glad to have had this time uh, tonight. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to share. This was it was a blessing to me. Yeah, you're definitely a blessing. <laughs> definitely learned a lot. Yes. Yeah, and I, I definitely think we will have to have a do over or a part two. Uh, part two so, so I hope hopefully you would want to come back. Uh, yeah, but it was uh, I really enjoyed. It. <laughs> yes, yes, with pink and pearls. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely a, a pleasure to have you, Ms. Uh, Karen Robinson. Um, I'm sure our viewers, I, I love the engagement um, that some of our viewers uh, chimed in on the chat. So thank you, uh, viewers. Thank you, champion parents. We'd like to take this time to thank you all for tuning in. As always, we appreciate your support. Uh, during this time, we are still in a pandemic. Good people, please be safe. Wear your mask, use your hand sanitizer, and remember to please practice social distancing. Um, happy, happy holidays. Christmas is around the corner. Uh, be safe. Be aware of your surroundings. Pay attention. Put the phone away till you get inside. Don't talk. Don't take no perfume, no samples, anything. Just keep going. If you're going to donate, drop it in a bucket and keep going. You know, so everyone be safe until next time. Thank you. We love you and God bless. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Bye.